All right, number one, find the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun if the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, and the distance between the two is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, didn't we do that already? And the answer is, yes, we did. So we're just going to write the answer down. Okay, so here it is. This is the value for the earth and the sun. This was the example we did last time. Here's the answer. I'm just going to write the answer down, okay, because it's, you already solved that problem. There's no point in redoing it again. Um, because we already figured it out. So the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun is 3.55 times 10 to the 22nd Newtons. All right, there we go. Look, see, I told you it was going to be easy. All right, now number two. So this is the thing we kind of hinted at last time, but we didn't talk about, and it confused a lot of people. So given the force of gravity acting between the Earth and the Sun from number one, what is the Earth's tangential velocity as it orbits the Sun? And here's the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Sun, and the distance between the Sun and the Earth. It was given beforehand, but I went ahead and listed it in the problem also. So before we just start jumping in and trying to solve an equation, let's think about what we have and what we're solving for, okay? So for number two, we have the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun, 3.55 times 10 to the 22nd Newtons, okay? We've got the mass of each, so we'll call the mass of the Earth M1. That's 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. We have the mass of the Sun, we'll call that M2, which is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th. We have the distance between the two, which is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th. And the problem is asking us to solve for the tangential velocity. So I'm looking for an equation that has tangential velocity and as much of the other stuff in it. So I'm looking at my equations here at the top of the page. And I'm saying to myself, well, my tangential velocity equations are kind of limited. So let's just look at each of them, and then we'll go from there. So the first equation, does it have tangential velocity? Yes, it does. Okay, so this is an option. Second equation does not. This is just a constant. Third equation does not. Fourth equation does. Fifth equation does not. Sixth equation does. So all three of these equations will work. Okay. However, this equation requires me to know the rotational velocity, which I do not know the rotational velocity of the Earth. So this equation's out because there's no way to know what omega is. That's not entirely true. There is a way to know, but I, we're not going to do it now. Okay. So this equation requires me to know how long it takes the Earth to go around the sun, which is not one of my knowns and unknowns. And this equation requires the centripetal force and the radius, which also seems like I don't have. So I can use none of these, it appears, which appears to be a problem, if you're asking me. So let's look at what's going on. Here is the Earth. Here is the Sun. The Earth orbits around the Sun like this. And they're separated by some distance between them of uh, D. Now, this still doesn't tell me anything about this equation. But if I'm looking at the Earth, I'm saying to myself, hey, the Earth is circular motion. So that gives me a new way of looking at this equation. Fc is the centripetal force acting on the Earth which the centripetal force on the Earth is gravity, right? The Earth goes around the sun because of gravity. So here it is. Fg is the centripetal force. So Fg is Fc, and I'm going to rewrite that down here. Okay, so Fc is the force of gravity, which is 3.55 times 10 to the 22nd.
okay? Now, the next part of this equation is the mass. So I need the mass of the object moving in a circle. That's how we've always solved this. The earth is the one moving in the circle. So the mass I'm going to use is the earth's mass, 5.98 times 10 to the 22nd. Or sorry, 24th, my bad. Okay, the next part I need is the tangential velocity, which is what I'm solving for. And the last thing I need is the radius. Well, I don't have a radius written down, but if I look at my drawing, I'll notice that the radius of the Earth's circle is the distance between the Earth and the moon. So I can just write down D equals 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. And there we go. I've got everything I need to set up the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So the equation is FC 3.55 times 10 to the 22nd equals M 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, v squared over r, which the r is the distance between them, 1.496 times 10 to the 11th. There we go. All right. I'm going to um, jump through the math kind of fast because I'm focusing on how to solve the problem. We've already spent a lot of time on the math, so I'm not going to spend uh, any more than I need to. So to get V by its squared, we first need to multiply this to both sides. That gives me 5.31 times 10 to the 33rd. And this stuff is still over here. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th V squared. Okay, I need to get V by itself, so I'm dividing both sides by 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. When I do that, I get 8.88 times 10 to the ninth, I think, to the eighth, equals v squared. Square root both sides to get v by itself. Two point nine eight times 10 to the fourth meters per second. And if you don't write it in scientific notation, that's fine. Okay. If you're having trouble with the math, I'll be happy to look at it with you, um, but I want to get through the concept first. So there's my answer to number two. BT equals 2.98 times 10 to the fourth. Last one, number three. Given the Earth's tangential velocity from number two, what is the period of the Earth measured in days? In other words, how long does it take the Earth to revolve around the sun once? And I gave you a hint. There are 8.64 times 10 to the four seconds in one day. So we know tangential velocity. We know all these other things, centripetal force, mass, uh, displacement, all that kind of stuff. So 
we use this equation for number two. So we need to find period. Period is the time it takes to go around once, and that is this here. Capital T is period. It's the time it takes to go around once. So this is the equation we're going to use for number three. I guess I should use the color I'm actually going to use. Okay. So here we go. VT equals 2 pi r over period. So we already found VT. That's my answer from number 2. So that would be 2.98 times 10 to the 4th. And that's going to be equal to 2 times pi times the radius. Again, we're talking about the radius of Earth's circle, which is the distance between Earth and the sun. So that's going to be 1.496 to the 11th divided by t. I don't want t in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply it to both sides. That gives me 2.98 times 10 to the 4th t equals, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply these out in the same step, 2 times pi times 1.496 to the 11th. 9.3, uh, here, 9.40 times 10 to the 11th. And now to get t by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2.98 times 10 to the 4th. We get the time to go around once, the period, 3.15 times 10 to the 7th seconds. Now, that's not helpful. I don't, like, I don't have any clue how many seconds that is. Um, so I gave you a conversion. I said there's 8.64 um, times 10 to the um, 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds in a day. So we're going to turn this number into days. All we have to do to do that is divide this number by the number of seconds in a day. And there are 8.64 times 10 to the 4th seconds per day. When I do that, you're never going to believe what we get. Oh my gosh, we got 365. Who would have guessed that? Now, there was some rounding here, which is why we didn't get 365 and a quarter. It's a little disappointing, but not significantly. So that's how you solve. This is, this is start to finish how one of these problems will work. Find the force of gravity between the objects. Use that to figure out how fast it's orbiting. Use that to figure out how long it's going to take to orbit. Okay, that's the whole problem start to finish worked all the way through.